Dear colleagues, in this presentation, we want to display you a method for optimization of a cooling network that is based on statistics. Useless to say that the method can be also implemented for a heating network and, in general, for any other network where there are many users, but they are not working full time. The task is to reduce the investment for the cooling generation and also for the piping. That brings, moreover, a significant saving in the running cost, especially concerning energy demand. Let's see together. A cooling network consists of four parts. First, the generation equipment, where the cold is produced and put at disposal. They can be chillers, cooling towers, exchangers, or any combination of them. At the second place, we find the machines for transferring and storing the cold. They are pumps and tanks. The third part is the distribution. They are pipes, valves, insulation, and instrumentation. On top, there is the control system. This affects all of three above positions. However, only the mechanical part of the network is subject to change by flow rate. That is where we can get the measured saving by optimizing the system capacity. The size of the network, where for size we intend the capacity of the equipment and the dimension of the pipeline, depends upon the demand, of course. Should we have many users or many machines, we need to consider the demand of each one and then how many machines are working together, that is, the load factor, and where they are located. The standard way to proceed where no information about working times is available, is just to add the capacities. Should be a load factor known or estimated, the above sum can be reduced accordingly. However, we have still the risk to oversize or undersize the network if such estimation is not correct. In this presentation, we want to give you a professional tool for the estimation of such a load factor, or in other words, how the proper size can be chosen by means of the statistics. At first, we have to distinguish if the demand and cycles are the same or different by machine. If they are the same, we can treat the problem easily by means of the formulas given by the statistics. If not, we have to apply a numerical simulation. Here we make an example that represents our cooling system. There are 10 machines in one common network. The demand of each machine, flow rate, is known, as well as the operating time and the cycle time. We assume that the machine works at constant flow during its operating time. Our task is to find the system capacity, capital Q. This capacity affects the power of the chiller P1, the power of the pump P2, and the diameter of pipeline capital D. In the first case, we assume the 10 machines are equal. All have same operating and cycle time as displayed below. We assume that the machines start their cycles randomly and they work continuously. That means one cycle after the other without interruption. Task is to find the flow capital Q of the system, assuming a reliability of 98%. Let's take a while now to define the reliability in a statistical way. Assign the time frame of 24 hours or 1440 minutes. The design flow capital Q can stand the system operation up to 98% of that time. In other words, the system demand can exceed capital Q only for 2% of the operating time. When we choose the statistical approach, we assume the risk of undersizing the equipment, but this risk is reasonably small. The smaller is the risk we can accept, the more will be the capacity of the system. Eventually, we have to find a compromise. The statistics describing this configuration is the binomial distribution. 
the probability that K machines are demanding water is given by a formula. The probability that the maximum of Y machines are demanding water is the sum of the single probability. The sum must be greater or equal to 98% as per our choice. Y is our searched unknown. We find Y equal to four machines. Eventually, the capacity of the system is Y times Q, 120 cubic meter per hour. In the second example, the machines are different. That means the flow demand, as well as the operating and cycle times, are different. This is the most general case. The relevant data are displayed in the table. Also in this case, we want to find the overall flow capital Q under a reliability of 98%. Since for such a configuration, we don't have any formula at the disposal from the statistics, we need to run a simulation. We will adopt the Monte Carlo method. The sequence of the solution steps is briefly described here. Define an overall time frame TF being greater tentatively than 10 times the longest cycle. Generate a random array of n numbers. Each number represents the delay of each machine. Build the machine function QI function of T along TF. Each one is a step function, and that must be repeated n times as many are the machines. Sum the QI functions together. We get a function capital Q. Order the sum values capital Q in ancient order. Find the flow capital Q star corresponding to TF 98%. When capital Q star is found, our job is still not done because we are operating in a statistical way and we cannot rely on one combination of cycles only. The Monte Carlo method says we need to run many trials. Also, we repeat the steps from two to six K times as many random arrays are generated. After each trial, a value of capital Q star is found, and eventually we calculate the average of the Q star J when J changes from 1 to K, the standard deviation, and the sum of above. The value to take for the flow, the flow needed for our equipment sizing, is given at point 9. Hereby, the steps 3 and 4 from the above example limited to the first three machines to make the charts visible. Here are the steps 4, 5, 6 with all 10 machines. From the sum, we generate the demand profile by sorting the value in ancient order. Then in the profile chart, we identify the 98% of the running time and we find the corresponding flow that is capital Q star. This procedure we have to repeat many times. Finally, we build the average and the standard deviation of all the found results. The quantity to be used for the sizing is the average plus standard deviation. In the example, we get 103.7 cubic meter per hour and we have used 100 trials. I hope you have enjoyed it. Remember that statistics is only applicable when there are random events. Should be any constraints among the events, the result found here is not any longer realistic. Thank for attendance. See you next time. Bye bye.